Well, good morning, everyone. Might as well get this uh, meeting underway. Uh, any stragglers can join us uh, as we go along. So first of all, welcome to the first in a series of online webinars that ASD will be holding. Uh, first of all, I just want to make sure you guys can hear me okay. So if you can, just type yes in the chat box and then we'll keep, keep going on. Uh, that's all good. Rightio, so this webinar has been recorded and will be available uh, on ASD's help desk site early next week. I've disabled your mics for now, but please feel free to use the chat box at the bottom for any comments or questions. Um, and if you do have any questions during the webinar, just type them into the chat box and we'll go through them at the, at the end. Uh, this webinar is on how to set up the WDR settings on the DeView Pixum VD20 WDR camera. Uh, these settings should work well for most lighting conditions, but obviously not for all, as most of the time each site is going to have different lighting conditions. So certain settings may need to be tweaked specifically for each site. Uh, the setup should be fairly quick, and the more you get used to it, the quicker you'll be able to do it on site. Uh, all these configuration steps are also in a PDF document available on ASD's uh, help desk site, and should come with every VD20WDR Pixel camera that we provide. So let's get on with it. Right, wide dynamic range. I'm sure everyone um, should uh, have a basic understanding of what WDR means. It's basically defined as the ratio between the largest and smallest possible values of light in the scene. Um, so normally where this becomes difficult is in a backlight situation where uh, someone's standing in front of a lot of lights. So you have a, for example, standing in front of a window with a lot of light coming behind. Um, a normal camera won't be able to make out all the details of that person and they'll appear just as a shadow. Uh, WDR is measured in uh, decibels, a typical dynamic range for a sensor is plus or minus 60. Most WDR cameras are normally around about 100 decibels. Now Pixum, uh, the way Pixum chips work is a lot different to normal um, chipsets and this is because they're based on the CMOS sensor rather than the traditional CCD sensor. Uh, most CCTV cameras, except for some of the new ones coming out, are based on the CCD sensor, uh, which means that any light coming onto the chip is, uh, it only can adjust the chip for the light falling on the whole chip. Where with the Pixel camera, each individual uh, pixel basically acts as an individual camera and can adjust the light for uh, each individual pixel. Um, so these constantly self-adjusting pixels eliminate image compromising visual noise and deliver high resolution natural color and clarity. If you want some more information on the uh, Pixel technology, just go through to that website um, on the slide. Now here's just some rough examples of uh, how the uh, Pixel WDR chip uh, works and how it can improve the image in certain lighting conditions. Um, by no means do we guarantee that you'll always get these results, but this is just a good example of what the chip can actually provide. Right, now out in the field at the moment there are three different generations of the VU VD20 and WDR Pixel camera. Um, and to get into the advanced menu for each requires a different setup. Unfortunately, at the moment, when you come to a VD20 Pixum WDR camera, there's no way to tell what generation it is. Uh, we are working with Review on a better way to be able to distinguish one from the other. Uh, but at the moment, if you come through to a camera, uh, just try one of these um, three settings, and one of them should work. So for first generation cameras, hold the top, uh, top, and, button, top and bottom buttons down for 15 seconds, and then push Enter. For the second generation, um, it's a little bit more complicated. Go up, down, down, up, left, right, and then enter. Um, and then the third generation, the ones that are currently being provided, uh, you're in advanced menu by default. This is just an image of the little uh, controller that comes with the uh, Pixel VD20 cameras. And uh, um, so with the first generation, if you hold the up and down button for uh, 10 seconds and then push enter, um, and for the previous one, go up, down, down, up, left, right, and then enter. OK, 
Okay, before we actually start adjusting any settings on the actual camera, you need to make sure that you're in the advanced menu by using one of the uh, mentioned ways of accessing the advanced menu before. Now, we want to leave all the settings as, the, as default except for the specific settings that we're going to change below. After each setting has been changed, remember to exit out to the default menu, click on Save Restore and click on Save User Settings twice just to make sure that your any settings or changes you make are saved properly. The first thing we're going to do is change the day and night settings. So what I'll do is we'll bring up a camera and we'll go into it. So first off, to get into the menu, push down Enter. This is a Generation uh, Generation 3 um, WBI BD20 camera I'm using, so it's in the advanced menu um, straight away. So the first thing we want to do to change day and night settings is go to exposure. Um, we then want to come down to advanced exposure, come down to day and night setup, um, make sure DN control is set to auto, and then hit enter. And this will take you into this menu. Now we want to go to click on D and N threshold. That will, will take us to this setting. And we want to adjust uh, the in to 30 and the out to 18. And you just adjust uh, the slider by using the left and right buttons on the little OSD controller. Once we've finished those settings, again, click the previous page, go back to the main menu. And then remember to uh, save user settings twice. Okay. The next thing we want to do is adjust the um, white balance. So to adjust the white balance, we'll just click on white balance and click on mode. And then and then, uh, just adjust it to uh, ATW X extended, you know, XTND. Normally it will be on ATW normal. We found that in the field ATW extended gives a better picture. Again, once you've set that, come back out and remember to save the settings. And go back to the main menu. <coughs> now we'll go through on how to set up the actual WBR settings. So first of all, make sure the scene preset is set to indoor. Then go to setup. Then you want to come down to advanced setup. We want to ensure that meter mode is set to normal. We then want to come down to normal zones. Click enter. We want to make sure enable uh, zones is set to one only. Um, by default it's set to do, we want to change that to 1. And then we want to come down and adjust zone 1. Now you'll see that uh, by default it will show you all the zones on the screen which can be a little confusing. To see the zone that you're adjusting, just move it around and you'll see it as the white one that's currently highlighted. When it's in the uh, highlights of white, it means that we can move it around that zone round to the specific area we want to cover. We click the Enter button, that will change to green, which means that we can enlarge that specific area. If we click the uh, Enter button again, it will change to red, which means then we can shrink that specific area using the up, down, and left, right buttons. So white to move it, uh, that specific zone around, uh, green to enlarge that zone, and red to shrink it. Now, placement of the zone is uh, fairly paramount in getting to the camera to work properly. What we suggest most of the time is having a fairly uh, thin and wide zone and have that positioned, if you're looking at a doorway, um, around where a person's sort of head and shoulders would be coming around that specific doorway. So if we'll just elongate this out a little bit. And So, for example, if uh, it's not the best example of what you're looking at at the moment, but if someone wants to come through that doorway, something like this would probably be the, the best setting. Of course, it's going to be totally dependent on a site-by-site -site basis, but you'll see that as we actually uh, move the zone around, you'll see everything adjust in the background. 
Um, and if possible, it's best just to get someone to stand in the door while you're adjusting this to make sure that you get uh, to get it positioned in the best place. Uh, once you've got it in the place that you want it, just hold down the Enter key and it will come back through uh, to the main menu. Then we need to go back through to the main menu. Uh, oops, didn't to start. Come back through the main menu and make sure you've saved your settings by going to Save Your Settings twice again. Um, now we want to adjust the iris. Again, I'll bring up the uh, camera. Now to adjust the iris, we come down to Setup. We'll click on Iris. And we want to come down to the uh, AI threshold. Now the AI, AI threshold should be about minus 18. Uh, we need to change this to about minus 35. Now what this does is in extreme lighting conditions, this will um, stop the camera from hunting. I'm not sure if uh, many of you set up this camera in a really extreme lighting condition, you'll see it flashing from uh, light to dark really quickly. And that's the actual chip trying to hunt for the best picture. If we set down the AI threshold to about minus 35, it will stop that hunting happening. So again, once we've set that, we'll go back to the, uh, the main menu, click on Save and Restore, Save on User Settings twice. And the next thing we want to do is to go and set up the exposure. So we go on to Exposure, and there should be a setting there called AE Preferences. We want to change that to highlights instead of shadows and instantly you can see the huge difference it makes to the picture. And then we want to come down to the range control and we want to change this to custom. So click on enter, change this to custom and click on enter again uh, to change it. Now we have to be very careful when changing the range control uh, as if we set this too high, the bias too high, it will give a shadow effect around the figure, uh, around the figure of the counterproductive to what we're actually trying to do. During our tests at uh, a lot of Westpac and BMZ branches, um, we normally find that a setting of maybe six or seven, or probably between five and seven, uh, is the best setting for the bias setting. Again, once we set that, click on previous page, go back to the previous page, and make sure you save your settings again. Uh, now obviously once you've saved all your settings, you will then want to um, get out of the actual menu and then have someone uh, just walk through the door to make sure that uh, it's providing a good picture of that specific person. And that's the end of it. So not a huge webinar, but that should hopefully give you in a bit more detail on how to actually adjust um, these specific cameras. Um, now, if any of you do have any questions, uh, please just type it into the uh, chat box at the bottom and we can uh, go through them.